Susan O'Donnell is a researcher and adjunct professor at the University of New Brunswick, formerly a senior researcher at the National Research Council of Canada, where she specialized in studies of technology adoption. Susan, you are new to the scene. You've gotten very active in just the last year, building opposition to the latest push for new nukes in Canada called SMNRs or SMRs, Small Modular Nuclear Reactors. Can you tell us you know, what they are, who exactly is pushing these new reactors and why Canadians should care about this? Sure, well, thanks Angela. Thanks for inviting me on the panel. And I have a research project uh, at the University of New Brunswick called RAVEN. Rural Action and Voices for the Environment. I'm in Fredericton on unceded Wollastuck territory. So as you said, Angela, I'm fairly new to this. Up until about two years ago, I knew that New Brunswick had a nuclear plant on at Point Le Pro on the Bay of Fundy. Um, we're the only province in New Brunswick outside of Ontario with an operational nuclear power reactor. And I knew that its end of life was in about 20 years, but I had no idea that there were plans to replace it with new nuclear. I just assumed that we were going to go down a renewable energy path in New Brunswick. And then two years ago, when I first heard about these so-called small, small modular nuclear reactors or SMNRs, I looked at the information available on the government website and uh, our public utility NB Power, and there was so much information missing. It was just so obvious. There was no information about nuclear waste um, that the new reactors would produce. There was no information about the cost, the environmental impacts. So I started to look into it. And since that time, I've spent many, many hours researching and speaking with experts. And what I found was very disturbing. So our RAVEN project was part of a group of environmental organizations that brought uh, Gordon Edwards to New Brunswick in March last year. And after his visit, we formed the Coalition um, for Responsible Energy Development in New Brunswick. And I sit on the core member group as the, the representative for the RAVEN project. Um, the film does talk about the nuclear industry's claims that nuclear energy is required for climate action. So I want to state clearly up front uh, that my review of peer reviewed research has convinced me and many other people um, that there's no way that the proposed new reactors, the SMNRs, will contribute to climate action. And this is basically why we should care about this because the reactors proposed are way too slow. Um, they likely, based on past performance, won't even work. Uh, they're way too expensive and they're gonna suck up billions of dollars in public funding if the industry gets its way. And if they can possibly get them to work, um, these SMNRs are gonna create another legacy of new kinds of nuclear waste that future generations will be paying to maintain forever. Um, one of the aspects of the film um, that I really liked is that it shows how the industry and government use propaganda to sell the nuclear dream. And I think it's important to remember that the nuclear industry has played a big part in creating the climate crisis by selling this dream of limitless energy, of boundless energy, the idea that we can all just use as much as we want because eventually nuclear en energy will come through. They've had a century of peddling that dream to Canadians and of course their dream hasn't panned out. The twisted irony is that now after playing a big role in creating the climate crisis, the nuclear industry is selling the idea that nuclear energy will help end the climate crisis, specifically SMNRs. So as far as who and what is pushing nuclear reactors in Canada, um, I think there's really three things that it's important to focus on to understand um, what's behind the push. One is that the nuclear industry is desperate. Um, the nuclear industry is desperate to save itself. Um, the nuclear industry is a division of the public utilities in New Brunswick and Ontario, NB Power, Ontario Power Generation and Bruce Power. And all of these have can do nuclear reactors operating that have an end of life coming up. And there's no way that Canada is going to build more, build more of these can do reactors. They haven't been that successful. So the industry sees SMNRs as their way to save the industry. 
Um, and as an immediate indication of how desperate they are, the SMNR is under review currently. There is between eight and 12 of them. They're all different competing designs. They're very different from the current reactor in, in Canada, the CANDU reactors. They have different cooling systems, use different kinds of fuel. Um, the industry has no idea if any of them are going to work, so they're just throwing everything out there, trying desperately to make something happen. The something being getting more public money for the industry. Um, the nuclear industry has a very powerful lobby um, right behind the oil and gas lobby. Uh, the sales and marketing function is pumping out endless materials. They're organizing events, partnering with organizations and groups that are willing to take their money. And the propaganda that is being pumped out about SMNRs is extreme, everything from half-truths to outright lies. For example, the industry is promoting the idea that extracting plutonium from used can-do fuel, which the propagandists call recycling nuclear fuel, they, they say that this is going to be an affordable way to fuel new reactors and solve the problem of nuclear waste. And if you read any of the peer-reviewed research, you'll find out very quickly that this is just nonsense. It's nonsense. Um, another reason why these are being pushed is really there's at least two nuclear industries. There's the nuclear power industry and the nuclear waste industry. So nuclear waste is a huge industry in Canada. So you have, as I mentioned, the public utilities that are generating nuclear power, but private industry is involved in all aspects of nuclear power, as well as cleaning up the mess that the nuclear industry has made, which is the nuclear waste. So companies such as um, SNC-Lavalin in Canada, but also American companies are involved in the nuclear um, waste industry. They're also involved in nuclear weapons manufacturing in the US um, that are very involved in the nuclear waste industry. So there's a lot of public money involved. And whenever there's um, money at this level involved, you'll have a lot of pressure to keep the um, public money flowing. So uh, just for an example, Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, which is a private consortium that involves SNC-Lavalin that's funded by public money, is conducting research now in Chalk River, Ontario on extracting plutonium from used nuclear fuel. And so far the federal government, government has given more than 50 million in public funds to Moltex for this plutonium extraction scheme. I don't know how much they're paying for the research in Chalk River. The New Brunswick government has given them um, 5 million and Moltex is currently preparing grant applications for even more public money and you can bet they're gonna be asking for a lot more. And then finally, I would say another push for these new reactors is that the federal and provincial governments are captured by the nuclear industry. Um, and their primary concern is to save the nuclear industry. The primary concern of the governments is to save the nuclear industry rather than ensure the public interest. So on the federal level, we have the main departments involved are Natural Resources Canada, Innovation, Science and Economic Development Canada and the regional economic development agencies in the Atlantic. In my case, that's ACOA. They all have a core mandate for industrial development. That's what they do. Um, the departments um, federally that we would hope to be primarily focused on the public interests, such as Health Canada and Environment Canada, are either also captured by industry or really asleep at the wheel because they are not speaking up when clearly they should be. And the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, when it comes to these SMNRs, is also captured. They created this money-making scheme for themselves called vendor design reviews that certify that the nuclear reactor proponents understand the regulations of the CNSC. And it's really just a farce. <laughs> the interesting thing about this push for SMNRs by the government is how it's transferring public money to the private sector. Um, when the CANDU reactors were being built in the 1970s and 1980s, the federal money went directly to the public utilities, not to the private sector companies. And the money went to public utilities in Ontario, Quebec and New Brunswick. But Quebec got out of the nuclear power business almost 10 years ago, although they still have a forever legacy of nuclear waste. So politically now, it's very difficult for the federal government to hand over millions and maybe billions of dollars to public sector utilities in Ontario and New Brunswick only. So the solution they've come up with is to hand it over to private companies and call it industrial development. In one federal funding pocket alone, there's $8 billion available for new nuclear development for private sector companies. 
So just to conclude, um, I just want to say that when it comes to climate action, nuclear is not a solution. We have much better options and it's not required. And from an activist point of view, there's a lot of work to do. Um, we need to keep asking questions um, to keep sharing information about these SMNRs. Um, and I would encourage everyone watching here to spread the word, talk with your friends, uh, your neighbors and family. And those of us working on this issue are convinced that the more people learn about small modular nuclear reactors, the more they'll be opposed to spending public funds on developing them. And that once we reach a critical mass of people opposed to expanding nuclear infrastructure in Canada, the political parties will take notice and do something about it, we hope. Um, some analysts of social movements say that it will take another critical nuclear accident to change the tide of public opinion like Fukushima or Chernobyl. Obviously, we're hoping that will not happen, but when it does, the anti-nuclear movement will be ready with information for the public that the industry and the government will never provide. So there you go, Angela. That's my spiel on my take on what's happening. <laughs>